Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So in today's video, we are going to look at the concept of ligand and the different types of ligand in chemistry. So uh, let me start by defining a ligand. So a ligand is the molecule, or it can be an ion that binds a central metal atom to form a coordination complex. So you can see clearly here, we have the central metal atom here as copper. And we have water molecules, six molecules of water bind it to the central metal ion, which is copper. So these water molecules, they are considered as a ligand. So they are molecules that bind to the central metal ion to form coordination complex. So if you take the whole of this, the whole of this, this is what you call coordination complex. And for a compound to be considered as a ligand, they must possess long pair of electrons. Like for example, if you can take water molecules, we have oxygen there. So the oxygen, if you can take oxygen, the atomic number of oxygen is eight. So if you now draw the electron configuration of oxygen, you can see that, of course, on the first shot you have two electrons. And then here we have one, two, three, four, five, six so in oxygen there are two long pair of electrons but it's only one that is participated or they usually participates in mm -hmm. formation of coordination complex so that is why it's considered as a monodental ligand because it only donates one of the long pair of electrons so for a compound to be considered as a ligand it must possess a long pair of electron and then uh very importantly this ligand they are very important in stabilizing the coordination complex and also influence the properties and the reactivity of the metal so you cannot compare the reactivity of the metal when it binds to the central metal uh when it binds to the ligand and in terms of the reactivity must not be disturbed so we should understand that this coordination compounds or the ligands is very essential in coordination chemistry and catalysis of a of, of a molecules or of, of, of an element. So then the definition of ligands based on their electron sphere donation. So like an uh, electron pair donors that coordinate with central metal ions. So a ligand, they are also called Lewis bees. They are molecules that donate lone pair of electrons to the central metal ion. And this ligand can be defined or can be classified based on charge. We have neutral ligand, anionic ligands and cationic ligands so when you said neutral ligands it means that there are ligands that doesn't actually have any charge on them they are neither positive neither negative an example of this neutral ligand we have nh3 ammonia we have water molecules as an example of neutral ligand and then for the anionic ligands, we have chloride ion, we also have oxalates. Oxalates are examples of anionic ligands. And then for the cationic ligands, we have nitrosyl. Nitrosyl NO. We have nitrosyl NO plus. We also have hydrazinium, which is NH2H5 plus. This is what you call uh, atomic ligand. So you see, this ligand can also be classified based on their charges. So then, the ligands, they are very, very important also is stabilizing the coordination complex. So they will actually play a crucial role in stabilizing the complex. 
that is the Kovlosham complex. And then, after all, that's like, and it's not only in chemistry, it's not outside living organisms alone, it's not only in a non living, it also applies in humans. Like, for example, the role of hemoglobin in the transportation of oxygen. So there's usually binding between hemoglobin and oxygen. The oxygen there is your ligand, so there is that interaction. So it is important there. And they are also very important industrial processes. These industrial processes can be in terms of catalysis. It can be in terms of the material sciences. So we should know that this uh, coordination between ligand and the center metal ion, it plays a crucial role. And ligand are also used in complex geometric titrations and sensors, that is in sensor biotechnology. So uh, ligand can also be classified based on the number of lone pairs of electrons in the donate. So they are can actually classify based on the number of donor atoms they possess. So we have actually basically three categories or three main categories of uh, ligand. We have monodented, bidented, and tridented. Sorry, polydented ligand. So mono means they donate only one lone pair of electrons, while bidented means that they donate two lone pair of electrons. While in the case of polydentate, they donate more than two lone pair of electrons. So each type of this uh, ligand has distinct coordination properties and geometry. So let's look at the different uh, examples of this ligand. You see, for the monodental ligand, that is those that donate one lone pair of electrons, we have water molecule, ammonia, cyanide, chloride, and furidine are all examples of monodental ligand. While for the bidental ligand, we have ethylene diamine. You see the nitrogen here, one, one. Each of its donates the lone pair of electrons. And that is why they are bidented, meaning that they donate two lone pair of electrons. In addition, we have acetal acetonates. You see, this can donate, this one can also donate. We we'll also have oxalates. So oxalate is also another example of bidental ligand. So then uh, another example of all types of the ligands, we have polydental ligand where we have diethyl triamine. So diethyl triamine is an example of tridental ligand. It can donate one lone pair of electrons from here, one lone pair of electrons from here, and one lone pair of electrons from here. And that is what makes it as tridental ligand. And then we have ethylene diamine tetraacetic acids. Ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid is one of the examples of hexadental ligand, meaning that it can donate six lone pair of electrons. So let's look at one after the other. So monodental ligand have a single donor atom that bind to the central metal atom. And examples of this, we have water, ammonia, and chloride are examples of monodental ligand. And they typically form complexes with lower coordination numbers. Yeah, because the number of lone pair of electrons donated by the atoms is their coordination number. So if you have two lone pair of electrons, sorry, if you have one atom donate one lone pair of electrons, it means that the coordination number is one. So coordination number indicates the number of electrons donated or the number of lone pair of electrons donated by the ligand. So because monodental ligands in the form coordination complex, the only contribute to a lone pair of electrons. And that is why they have lower coordination number. 
because for you to have five coordination number, it means that five monodental ligand must bind to the central metal atom. That is when you are going to have coordination number as five. So very importantly here, these are some of the examples of the monodental ligand. So let me just give an example. Let's say we have ion F and then we have cyanide here. We have cyanide here, another cyanide from this angle. And then we have another cyanide, another cyanide here, another cyanide. So you see there are six different, oh sorry, there are six monodental ligands. So if you ask well, the coordination number of this is going to be six. So the coordination number of monodental ligand in this case is six. We have cyanide, bromide ion, thiocyanide, fluoride ion, ammonia, and chloride ion are all examples of monodental. So then uh, the next thing is bidental ligands. That is the ligand that donates to the of electrons that can coordinate to a single metal ion and examples we have oxalate and we have ethylene diamine are the common examples so the ability to chelate rings enhances the stability of the metal complex so let's look at the example so we have ethylene diamine we have oxalates we have pedantroline all are examples of bidental ligand and then for the polydental ligand they are also known as chelating agents and they have multiple donor atoms they combine to a central metal atom at several sites forming stable complexes and examples of these polydental ligands we have tridentates where it donates Three lone pair of electrons. Example, we have diethyl triamine. We have the tridental ligand where we have triethylene triamine. So triethylene triamine is an example of the tridental. And then hexadental ligand, we have EDT, that is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. So all these are examples of polydental ligand and they form very stable complexes and they are also considered as a chelating agent because if sometimes you want to make some of the metal ions unavailable in a particular environment, let's say in a fluid or in a blood, you want to make uh, some ions Availably absent, like in blood, you use EDTA bottle because you remove anticoagulant or you remove calcium ion from blood so that to prevent coagulation of the blood. And how is that happened? It's because this ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid will bind or will form a complex with calcium ions where it will no longer be available in the blood and of course a calcium is one of the important component of blood growth, uh, blood clotting complex so making it absent then the blood will not be clot so then chelate effects so a chelate effects that is chelating effects or chelate effects it refers to the increased ability of a metal ligand complex formed by polydental ligand. This phenomenon occurs due to formation of multiple bonds between the ligand and a metal. So you see, this is a fully deprotonated EDTA. So it will now bind with the metal as M, then making it to have a metal EDTA complex. So therefore, a chelation is a process where a polydental ligand bind to the metal and make the metal unavailable or make them uh, not access by some important biomolecules in the body. So a chelating agent is an agent that binds a metal ion, making them to be absent 
They are already, let's say, you have a blood, and in the blood there is calcium, and you don't want the blood to clot. So how do you do that? By removing calcium, because calcium is one of the important elements involved in blood clotting system. So if you add EDTA, the EDTA will bind to the calcium. Therefore, all the protein being those proteins that are associated with blood clotting, they will find no calcium. Therefore, the blood will not clot. So chelation enhances solubility and it reduces the, 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 the tendency of metals to participate. So like for example, it enhances the solubility and reduces the, the, the tendency of the metals to precipitate. So uh, what is bidental ligand to the ambidental ligand? So ambidental ligands, they combines to a metal ion through more than one atoms, but only one at a time. Like, for example, we have iocyanate and nitrite. nitrile. So, in sulfur here, in isothiocyanate, the nitrogen and the isothiocyanate, they all have lone pair of electrons. So, it means that the sulfur can bind and the nitrogen can also bind. So you see here in this case, the nitrogen binds. And of course, in this case, the sulfur binds. So it means that they are the ligand that they have a chance to bind with more than one atom. So you see here, sulfur combined and nitrogen combined. Also, if you take this NO2 minus, the nitrogen has lone pair of electrons and also the oxygen also has lone pair of electrons. So each of the atoms can participate in the formation of the complex because they all have lone pair of electrons. Yeah. So their binding mode can influence the geometry and properties of a resulting complex. So uh, so I think you now understand bidental ligand. So the ambidentate. Ambidentate is a ligand that has more than one atoms and each of the atoms because they have lone pair of electrons, they can participate in binding to the central metal atom, but only once at a time. So then, because they cannot bind at the same time, the bridging ligands are the ligands that connect two or more metal centers in a coordination complex. So you see, this is a metal, this is a metal. So a bridging ligand, they are ligand that can connect two or more metal atoms at the same time. Like for example, this is CO, CO, CO. So you see they coordinate or they connect iron here and they also coordinate iron here. So this is example of visual ligands where the ligand connects two or more central metal atoms at the same time. So examples of this visual ligand, we have oxalates, acetoacetate ions, which can link multiple metals. So these ligands play essential roles in the formation of clusters and polymers. So then, what is the importance of ligands in biological system? Many biological forces depend on metal ligand interaction, like hemoglobin utilizes ligand to transport oxygen efficiently in bloodstream. Enzymes often use metal ions coordinated by ligand to catalyze biochemical reaction. So, uh, what are the importance of the, this ligand in catalysis? Ligands are vital in catalytic reaction, enhancing reaction rate and selectivity. They can stabilize reaction intermediate and lower activation energy. So, transition metal complexes with specific ligand are used in industrial catalysis. So if you have a ligand bind with the central metal ions, they can also serve as a ligand. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important thing to understand ligand and the different types of the ligand. And I hope this video will be important to all of you. Please don't forget to subscribe and join to my YouTube community for more video content. Thank you. I'll see you next in my next video.